This episode is brought to you by our friends at Spoken.com. Spoken's for professionals who want to improve their English to reach their career goals. And Culips is partnering with Spoken to give you a special offer for two free lessons. To get all the details, just visit Culips.com slash Spoken. Hey, everybody. My name's Andrew. And I'm Suzanne. And we're back with another Culips episode. Hey, Suzanne. Hey, Andrew. How are you? I'm not so bad. How about you? Doing pretty good. A little tired today, but <laughs> pretty good. Suzanne, right before we started to record this episode, we were chatting and you told me that you have a new neighbor that just moved in. Yeah, I'm getting new neighbors this month. This month. Well, it's funny that you're getting new neighbors because today we're talking about looking for an apartment. And I suppose your new neighbors would have just done this, right? They would have found the apartment, and it just happens to be right next door to you. Absolutely. They just did the whole process of finding and getting an apartment. To be honest with you, there's nothing more that I hate than going through this process. Yeah, it's one of the most annoying chores or things you have to do as an adult. Yeah, so today we're going to tackle this annoying task head on and we're going to do a real talk episode. If you don't know what that is, well, real talk is the series where we take a close look at situations that you need to know how to navigate if you live in an English speaking country. In this episode, we're going to look at a very important situation, looking for an apartment. Exactly. Or more specifically, calling a landlord or a property manager to find out information about an apartment listing. Andrew, let's break down that vocabulary quickly. What is a landlord? And a property manager, what's the difference between the two? Well, a landlord is someone who owns a property and rents it out directly to a tenant. Okay, so a tenant is the name for someone who lives in a rented house or an apartment. Like, I live in an apartment, so I am a tenant. And you do too, right? You're in an apartment, so you're a tenant. Well, yes, but my boyfriend owns the apartment, so I'm maybe his tenant? <laughs> <laughs> maybe. <laughs> anyway, on the other hand, a property manager is someone who manages a large apartment building on behalf of a big company that owns that building. Oh. Usually a landlord is the owner of a small apartment building or a house that's being rented, while a property manager cares for a very big apartment building. I think that's the difference. Okay, so the definition is kind of in the name. A property manager kind of manages the property, right? Takes care of the property of a large uh, building and the surrounding property. Exactly. I think the difference is, is that the landlord is the owner where the property manager is just a manager. It doesn't actually own the building or the house. Interesting. Got it. Cool. So uh, let's break down the plan for today for this episode. First, we're going to listen to a dialogue 
between an apartment hunter. This is somebody who's looking for an apartment, an apartment hunter, and a property manager. So the apartment hunter has just seen an apartment listing or an ad for an apartment online and called the property manager for more info. So we'll listen to that conversation and then afterwards we'll take a close look at it and break down some of the most important expressions and information that's necessary to know when you are inquiring about an apartment. Awesome. So let's take a listen to that conversation. We'll get to it right after this message. The best way to study with Culips is by becoming a Culips member. When you become a Culips member, you will get full transcripts, detailed vocabulary explanations, and quizzes for each episode. Visit Culips.com. That's C U L I ps.com to sign up and become a member. Hello? Oh, hi. My name's Christina. I was just calling about the apartment that you're renting out. I saw an ad for it on the internet. Ah, uh, yeah. Hi, Christina. My name's Billy. I'm the building manager. How can I help you? Um, is the apartment still available? Yep, it sure is. Excellent. Could you give me some information about it? So, it's a bright and sunny one-bedroom apartment. It was renovated about two years ago and has modern furnishings. Plus, we're planning to throw a new coat of paint on the walls before the new tenant moves in. Oh, that's great. And what about the lease? Yeah, it's just a standard one-year lease. Nothing special. After a year, it goes month to month. Okay, and if I remember correctly, the rent is $800 a month? Mm-hmm, that's right. 800 a month plus a damage deposit of a half month's rent. Okay, I see. Is there anything else I should know about the place? Uh, well, let's see. The building's quiet. We've never had any major incidents. And there's a secured entrance. Oh, that's nice. Uh, heat and hot water are included, but the other utilities are up to you. Sure, I understand. You don't have any pets, do you? Uh, no, I don't. But if I did, is that a problem? Well, yeah, that would be. Our building is pet and smoke free. Oh, okay. One more question for you. Shoot. Is there in-suite laundry? Uh, unfortunately not. But we do have a laundry room in the basement. It's coin-operated. Oh, okay, I see. Well, if possible, I'd like to come and see the apartment. Can I set up a viewing? We're having an open house this Saturday from 9 to noon. Does that work for you? Yeah, it sure does. I'll see you then. Okay, great. See you then, Christina. Thanks, Billy. Bye. Okay, so we just heard a conversation between an apartment hunter and a property manager. The apartment hunter called the manager to find out more information about the apartment. Now, we'll go through the conversation and discuss and explain the important expressions and vocabulary we heard. All right, so Suzanne, the first part of the dialogue that I want to look at a little bit closer today is the first question that Christina, the apartment hunter, asks Billy, the property manager. She asks if the apartment is still available. 
And let's listen to that part of the conversation again. Um, is the apartment still available? Um, is the apartment still available? Okay, Suzanne. Yeah. Skill testing question for you. Okay. Why is this the best question to ask first when you call a landlord or property manager? Well, usually, if it's a really good listing, meaning a good price, a good location, chances are apartments go pretty quickly. And if you're calling to get more information about the apartment, the first and most important part of that info is to know whether or not the apartment is still available or still in need of a tenant. Exactly. If you live in a small town in Canada, a smaller city, this is not a problem at all. But in the urban centers, especially in Vancouver and Toronto, apartments go like hotcakes. They just fly off the shelf. In New York too, same thing. New York too, yeah. The landlord puts an ad up and right away gets a lot of calls about it. So in order to save everybody's time, it's a good idea to ask, is this apartment available? Before you ask many questions and then get to the end and find out, oh, it's already been rented out. <laughs> yeah, it will save you a lot of time. Totally. So this is our first tip. Make sure right from the top of the conversation, you ask about the availability. <laughs> All right. So the next part of the conversation that we're going to check out today is when the landlord describes the apartment, okay? Describes what it looks like and some of its features. Let's listen to that part of the conversation again. So it's a bright and sunny one-bedroom apartment was renovated about two years ago and has modern furnishings. Plus, we're planning to throw a new coat of paint on the walls before the new tenant moves in. So it's a bright and sunny one-bedroom apartment. It was renovated about two years ago and has modern furnishings. Plus, we're planning to throw a new coat of paint on the walls before the new tenant moves in. The property manager, Billy, mentions that the apartment was renovated two years ago. Sue, what does this mean, renovated? It usually means that the apartment or part of the apartment has been upgraded. So maybe knocked down and new materials have been added and rebuilt. Mm-hmm. Maybe the flooring has been changed. Yeah. Or the cabinets in the kitchen have been changed. Maybe the bathroom has new tile or a new bathtub. Mm -hmm. So this is a great thing. If the apartment's been renovated, it means it's fresh and current. Yeah, and probably cleaner as well. Yeah, hopefully. Now, the property manager also mentioned that it has modern furnishings. Now... Be careful, everybody, not to get this word furnishings confused with furniture because they're actually different, aren't they? Yeah. Furniture is referring to a couch, a chair, a dining room table, things that are movable that you bring in and out of the apartment. Mm -hmm. Whereas furnishings usually refer to Maybe the banister on the staircase or the knobs and cabinets or flooring or countertops, mm -hmm. right? The sink and the shower, the toilet, the things you can't move. Yes, the things that are attached to the house. Maybe an island in the kitchen mm -hmm. with granite countertop. These are things you can't move around. They come stuck to the apartment. <laughs> now, the last thing 
that the property manager explained to the apartment hunter is that he plans to throw a fresh coat of paint on the walls before the new tenant moves into the apartment. Those walls must be cold. Just <laughs> kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's a good joke. I like it. <laughs> So, yeah, but we can imagine somebody just getting a bucket of paint and throwing it on the wall. Yeah. But this is not what he's talking about, right? I don't think so, at least. No, it's really a slang for putting on a new layer of paint. You know, mm -hmm. they're going to probably do it with care and consideration and not throw it on, but it's more casual it's more, we're going to take not a lot of time, but some time to put on a nice coat of paint. Yeah, that is the impression I get too. When you say, oh, we're just going to throw a new coat of paint on the walls. It means that they're going to clean things up, make it look nice, but they're not going to do a very, very elaborate, fancy job. Right. And it's probably a neutral color or a white color. Mm -hmm. Just to clean things up. Exactly. Now let's take a look at the next part of the conversation where the landlord talks about the lease of the apartment. Let's listen to that clip. Yeah, it's just a standard one-year lease. Nothing special. After a year, it goes month to month. Yeah, it's just a standard one-year lease, nothing special. After a year, it goes month to month. Okay, so a lease is very similar to a contract, isn't it, Suzanne? Yeah, you sign a paper similar to a contract. A lease is just a technical term for the contract that you sign when you are renting an apartment. So both the landlord or the property manager signs it and the new tenant also signs it. And in Canada, at least, the standard or typical lease length is one year. And then after one year, you can talk with your landlord about what you want to do. And commonly, people just go month to month. So they rent by the month, and if they want to move, they can do so at any time without penalty. But if you feel like you want a little bit more security, you can also renegotiate and re-sign the lease with your landlord. This is interesting, Andrew, because in the U.S., it's different. Okay. We have two different kinds of leases you either sign a yearly lease mm -hmm. or a two-year lease or a month-to-month. -month. It's very rare that it starts off as a one-year lease and then goes month-to-month. -month. Only certain properties that are open to quick turnover or having people coming in and out, maybe uh, furnished apartments, for business people, go month to month. It's not very common. Interesting. Yeah. I yeah. would say that it's fairly typical in Canada for a month to month relationship between the landlord and tenant to happen, but only after one year. Huh. At least in many of the apartments I've lived in, this has been the case. That's so interesting. Let's take a look to the next part of the conversation that is important. And this is talking about, well, maybe the most important thing, the rent. <laughs> <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Let's listen again to that section. Mm -hmm, that's right. 800 a month plus a damage deposit of a half month's rent. Mm -hmm, that's right. 800 a month plus a damage deposit of a half month's rent. So the landlord says that it's 800 a month 
plus a damage deposit of a half a month's rent. Now, Andrew, what's a damage deposit? Well, a damage deposit is some money that you have to pay at the start of your lease. And in Canada, legally, it can only equal half of one month's rent. So if your rent is $800 a month, half of that is $400. That is the maximum the damage deposit can be. And like I say, it's some money you have to give the landlord at the start of the lease as a kind of insurance policy, okay? So that if you damage the apartment somehow, maybe you break a window or you make a hole in the wall, well, the landlord can use this money at the end of the lease to pay for the repair. Huh. But if you don't damage the apartment, if you leave it in the same condition it is when you moved in, then you get that money back. Wow, that's great. It's nice to know that in Canada, they only can charge a half a month's rent legally because I feel like in the U.S., they don't do that. I've had to pay the first month's rent and two extra month's rents just to get a lease. What they normally do is you have to pay the first month's, the last month's, and a security deposit, which is equal to one month. So usually you're paying three months up front. And there's really no rules on that. Each uh, landlord and property manager sort of makes their own rule. So in, in New York City, there's no legal protection as far as only being charged a certain amount. Sometimes they ask you for more than that, in fact. It's crazy. A tip for all of our listeners that may be looking for an apartment in Canada or even in the U.S., when you move in, you have to do what's called a walkthrough with the landlord. And you do this while the apartment is still empty. You both walk through together and you inspect the apartment to search for any damage because... You know, if there's maybe a dent in the wall, you don't want to be held responsible for that when you move out. You want to note with the landlord that it's there before you move in, so you're not responsible for that. And in this situation, it's always good to take some pictures with your phone, just in case you are very unlucky and get a sneaky landlord who wants to try and trick you at the end. You can have some proof that no, 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 no. I didn't cause this damage. It was there all along. Mm-hmm. Good tips. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell I've moved a lot, Suzanne? Yeah, this is very good advice. The next part of the conversation that we'll look at is when the apartment hunter asks for a little bit more information about the property. And the landlord responds using some interesting expressions. So let's listen to the property manager one more time. Uh, well, let's see. The building's quiet. We've never had any major incidents. And there's a secured entrance. Uh, well, let's see. The building's quiet. We've never had any major incidents. And there's a secured entrance. The property manager mentioned that the building is quiet. This is always a perk. You don't want to live in a loud place, right? <laughs> yeah, that's good. <laughs> uh, he also said that there have never been any major incidents in the building. What does he mean by this, major incidents? Hmm. I would think that he means any kind of burglary or theft that could occur on a property. Exactly. Like a break-in or any crime 
So he's saying that they've it's been quiet and pretty crime free. Exactly. That's what I think he's talking about too. No major incidents, no crime, no burglaries, no theft, no vandalism. So it's a safe place to live, essentially, is what the property manager is communicating. Yeah. And I think the secured entrance is referring to perhaps a doorman at the building, someone who is stationed in the front of the building for security, or maybe a locked foyer where people have to buzz in and can't just access the building straight away. So there's some extra security measures at the front door, right? Maybe an extra lock or a security guard, a doorman. There's something that is protecting the entrance to this apartment building, which can give the tenants some peace of mind. The next section of the conversation Christina asks to come and see the apartment. So let's listen to that section. If possible, I'd like to come and see the apartment. Can I set up a viewing? We're having an open house this Saturday from 9 to noon. If possible, I'd like to come and see the apartment. Can I set up a viewing? We're having an open house this Saturday from 9 to noon. All right, and she asked an interesting question here. She said, Hey, property manager, can I set up a viewing? Set up a viewing. What does this mean, set up a viewing? Well, it means to have an appointment and time where you can go and check out the apartment to see it for yourself. See all the things in person. Exactly. Now, this is kind of a specialized way to ask this question. You could simply ask, can I come take a look or can I see the apartment? These are all different ways of asking essentially the same thing, right? Yeah, or set up an appointment to come see it. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But instead of having a private one-to-one -one apartment tour, the property manager mentions that he's having an open house on Saturday. Now, maybe everybody can guess by the words in this expression, open house, but Suzanne, can you explain what an open house is? Yeah, so an open house is usually a time frame, in this case, 9 a.m. to noon, where the landlord or property manager will be there and the doors of the apartment are open so that people who are interested in being tenants can come in as they want on their own time and check out the apartment. So no one has a specific time and appointment. It's just open for people to come in and out as they please during those times. Exactly. And this is more convenient for the property manager. He doesn't have to schedule a bunch of different appointments. He just makes one time where anybody who wants to can come and check out the place. Yeah, I kind of like those because it's less pressure sometimes. Sometimes when you have a one-on-one, -on -one, they ask a lot of questions and you feel like you're being pressured into renting the apartment even if you don't know if you want it. So sometimes it's nice because you can just walk around freely and check it out and then leave if you don't like it. That is right. And you'll also hear... This expression used sometimes to talk about houses that are for sale. A real estate agent will have an open house where you can come look at a house for sale. Also, some types of schools and universities will have an open house night where you can come 
check out the school and check out the class with no pressure of enrolling in that school. So that brings us to the end of today's episode, Andrew. Don't forget that we'll be replaying the conversation one more time at the end of the show. So please stay tuned for that. Yes. And if you enjoyed today's episode, please support us. Rate and review us wherever you listen to your podcasts. And if you have any questions or comments for us, you can send us a message through our Facebook page. That is facebook.com slash Culips Podcast or on our website, culips.com. And I'd encourage everybody to check out our new comment feature. Uh, the comments are back, guys, and I'm waiting for you to leave me a comment. So do it right now. <laughs> he really enjoys those comments. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's it for now. But we'll be back soon with another new episode. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Hello? Oh, hi. My name's Christina. I was just calling about the apartment that you're renting out. I saw an ad for it on the internet. Ah, uh, yeah. Hi, Christina. My name's Billy. I'm the building manager. How can I help you? Um, is the apartment still available? Yep, it sure is. Excellent. Could you give me some information about it? So, it's a bright and sunny one-bedroom apartment. It was renovated about two years ago. It has modern furnishings. Plus, we're planning to throw a new coat of paint on the walls before the new tenant moves in. Oh, that's great. And what about the lease? Yeah, it's just a standard one-year lease. Nothing special. After a year, it goes month to month. Okay, and if I remember correctly, the rent is 800 a month? Mm-hmm, that's right. 800 a month plus a damage deposit of a half month's rent. Okay, I see. Is there anything else I should know about the place? Uh, well, let's see. The building's quiet. We've never had any major incidents. And there's a secured entrance. Oh, that's nice. Uh, heat and hot water are included, but the other utilities are up to you. Sure, I understand. You don't have any pets, do you? Uh, no, I don't. But if I did, is that a problem? Well, yeah, that would be. Our building is pet and smoke free. Oh, okay. One more question for you. Shoot. Is there in-suite laundry? Uh, unfortunately not, but we do have a laundry room in the basement. It's coin-operated. Oh, okay, I see. Well, if possible, I'd like to come and see the apartment. Can I set up a viewing? We're having an open house this Saturday from 9 to noon. Does that work for you? Yeah, it sure does. I'll see you then. Okay, great. See you then, Christina. Thanks, Billy. Bye.